So here we are starting a brand new module and in this module we are going to study how our four basic operations addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division interact with radicals. And for the first topic in this module we're going to talk about multiplying radicals. Okay, so remember radicals are rational exponents. Okay, The square root is the same thing as the one-half power. So it shouldn't surprise you that our exponent rules that we talked about a while ago translate into radical rules. So in fact the product to a power rule that we had before translates into what we call the product rule for radicals. Okay, If you read the rule from right to left here it says when you multiply a to the m times b to the m you get a times b to the m which means a and b are both being raised to the m power. It's a similar rule for radicals. If you multiply the nth root of a times the nth root of b, you can just multiply underneath the radical expression. So you get the nth root of a times b. So in words, here's what the product rule says. The product rule says to multiply two nth roots multiply under the radical symbol. And in words, the quotient rule says to divide nth roots, divide under the radical symbol. All right, so here are a couple examples so you can see how this works. In the first example we have the cube root of 4 times the cube root of 16. So to multiply two cube roots, we're going to go ahead and transfer this multiplication underneath the cube root symbol. So the cube root of 4 times the cube root of 16 is the cube root of 4 times 16, which is the cube root of 64, which we know is 4, because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Unfortunately, before we can get to the main idea and the examples, we really should take a slight detour and, and talk about some of the terminology that you run into with radical expressions. Um, I had been trying to avoid this terminology as much as possible. Uh, I, I don't like extra words that could perhaps confuse people, but really as we as we get into adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing these radicals, uh, the terminology just can't be avoided. Okay, So it's not super difficult, but just so you know and so you can follow along as I use these words, when you have a radical, the little number that tells you the type of root is called the index. So this is the index. The number underneath the radical sign is called the radicand. Okay, so in this example, 3 is the index and 41 is the radicand. And then, and then of course, the little check mark looking thing is the radical symbol. All right. Now, why am I mentioning this here? Well, there's a point about the product and the quotient rule that we should really uh, make clear. The product rule only applies when you have the same index on your radicals. Right? For example, you cannot multiply the cube root of 5 and the fourth root of 13, okay? because they don't have the same indexes. That brings us to the main idea for this topic, which is actually pretty straightforward. Okay, to multiply or divide radical expressions, apply the product or quotient rule, and then simplify the result. Okay, like we said though, in order to apply the product or quotient rule, you have to have the same index. Okay, so don't try to apply these rules if you don't have the same type of root. And then I want to point this out, always simplify your result. Okay, your radicals should always be in simplified form if it's your final answer. So let's go ahead and work through some examples, see if we can get this all sorted out. So our first example deals with multiplication. The instructions say multiply and simplify, assume all variables represent positive values. So there are C parts, A, B, C, we'll start with A. So part A gives us square root of 20 times 
square root of 5, and we want to multiply and simplify. All right, so remember, the product rule tells us to multiply radicals that have the same index, so these can be multiplied because they're both square roots. To multiply these two square roots, we're going to change the multiplication so that it's underneath the radical. So the square root of 20 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 20 times 5. And we know 20 times 5 is 100. So ultimately this is the square root of 100. And again we know the square root of 100 is 10. right? Because there's a pair of 10's in here. 100 is 10 times 10. So ultimately the square root of 20 times the square root of 5 after simplification just becomes 10. So here's part B of example one. We're still multiplying and simplifying. Okay. But in this case, we're dealing with cube roots. That's, that's fine, that's not a big deal because both of the roots are cube roots. They have the same index. So to multiply these two cube roots, we're just gonna multiply underneath the radical sign. So this is gonna become the cube root of three times 18. And we know that 3 times 18 is 54, so this is the cube root of 54. Now at this point, even though we've multiplied the two radicals, we have not simplified. So what we're going to need to do is break down 54 into its prime factors and look for groups of 3. So 54 is 9 times 6, 3 times 2, 3 times 3. So you see inside of the 54, we actually have a group of three threes. So the cube root is going to take that group of three identical factors and give you a single representative on the outside. The 2 has no friend, so it stays inside. Which means that altogether the cube root of 54 is actually 3 on the outside, 2 on the inside. So 3 cube roots of 2. So that's our final simplified answer. Alright, on to part C. In part C we have to multiply two fourth roots, which is fine. right? They're the same type of root, so we can definitely multiply them. The difference is, though, we have some variables to deal with. Uh, I, we're not going to worry too much about the variables, we're just going to apply the product rule and then simplify like we usually would. All right. So the product rule says that I can go ahead and transfer this multiplication underneath the radical, so this is going to become the fourth root of 6x cubed times 2x squared underneath the radical. which if I multiply out these two monomials, 6 times 2 is 12, so this is the fourth root of 12, and then x cubed times x squared gives me x to the fifth, because I have to add the exponents. Okay. Now, unfortunately we're not quite done. We've multiplied, but we have not simplified. Okay, so we need to simplify the fourth root of 12x to the fifth. All right, so let me consider each of my factors here separately. I have a 12 to consider, okay, and I have an x to the fifth to consider. All right. The fourth root of 12, well, to simplify this, you would break down 12 and look for groups of four identical factors. 12 is 4 times 3, and 4 is 2 times 2. That's as far as it goes. There are not four identical factors in here. So the fourth root of 12 does not simplify. Okay, It's already done. Now, the fourth root of x to the fifth is a separate situation. Inside this x to the fifth, we have to look for groups of four factors. Okay. So if you take your 5x's and split them up into groups of 4, 
you see that 4 goes into 5 one time with a remainder of 1 which means that you are going to have an x to the first outside and then an x to the first inside. Right? The remainder is the part that stays inside, the original quotient is the part that comes outside. So altogether, the fourth root of x to the fifth is going to be x times the fourth root of x. Right? We have an x outside and x inside. Which means my simplified form over here the 12 doesn't change, right? I still have the fourth root of 12, but then I get an x outside from this guy. So I'm going to write x times the fourth root of, now I have a 12 that I put inside and an x that I put inside. So that's my result. Right, the 12 didn't simplify, but the x to the fifth gave me 1x outside and 1x inside. Don't forget your fourth root, right, because we started with fourth roots.